and welcome. My name is Deborah Rethwin Arbenlow and I'm a blogger and photographer for Second Life. Today I'm going to show you how to use the clone stamp, patch, and spot heal tools in order to fix imperfections in your images. The kinds of imperfections I'm talking about are things like clipping, where you have parts of your avatar showing through your clothing or your hair, lines that show up when you have different color head to body or just have your shadows enabled which creates a lot of times lines on your around your lips and on your neck and things like that that you need to do minor edits to. So this is a pretty extreme example. I specifically made this image to show you uh, very obviously how these can affect your photo. The first thing we want to do is make sure that we are working on our raw photo because we don't want to have all of the extra layers of effects. So your sparkles and rain and snow and unicorns and kittens or whatever you have above it, you don't want to do that until you've already finished these basic edits. So we're going to start on the raw image. So we have our raw image here and I've created a new layer. So you can create your new layer by going down here clicking create new layer. So I'm going to put all my edits on my new layer and not on my background layer. A lot of people don't even realize that you can do this. So what happens is on all of these options, so clone stamp here under sample, all of these options allow you to select all layers, which means that any edits that I do on this blank layer will draw from my main layer. So I can edit my edits on another layer. So it's great because then I can erase parts that don't work. If I clone stamp too much and I want to erase part of it, I don't have to affect my background at all. So it's a really important thing to do to separate your edits so that you don't end up having to start over if you mess up your background and you run out of history. So we want to go to our clone stamp tool and we want to select sample all layers. Same thing in any of the other ones. So patch, this is patch up here, patch tool. And then we want to sample all layers. Spot healing brush, sample all layers. So all of these functions we want to select sample all layers. So now we can go into the actual editing part. Now the clone stamp tool is literally a copy paste tool. It is best to use when you are talking about um, edges of the area. So here I have an edge that has uh, clippage. So a clone stamp tool would be perfect for this because it just copy and pastes. By contrast, the uh, spot healing and patch tools maintain the tone and texture of your image while uh, copying the sample that you take. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let's say we wanted to use the patch tool. Like I said, copies your tone and texture. But what happens when you have an edge, like here, I have an edge of skin. So what happens when you have an edge, so I'm selecting with my patch tool an area, and then here it pulls up my patch tool and I can click and hold it and drag it down to an area I want to select. So I have an edge here. So what happens is it doesn't know what parts to maintain. It doesn't know what texture and tone to maintain because there's more than one. So patch tools work best when you are not working on edges because they tend to take the wrong colors or blur them and that's not what you want on your edges. Because the clone stamp tool is a literal copy paste, it's the best option for your edges. And then you can go and clean up anything you don't like about it afterwards. So on our new layer, we're going to go to clone stamp. We're going to have our opacity at 100% and we're going to keep our hardness pretty high. I'm going to even put it at 100 just on the edge because I don't want to have any blurry areas. So normally we work with our clone stamp at a reduced um, hardness, so 0 to 50% hardness in the areas where you have skin, um, or your inside of the photo. But near edges, because you want to have a hard edge, you want to have your hardness up high. So I'm going to put it at just 100% for this small section. So here I want to increase my brush size a little, and then I'm going to select an area that is does not have clipping. 
that's nearby and pretty much lines up with this area that I want to cover. So here I'm going to hold Alt and it pulls up these crosshairs which I can then click over an area that I want to copy. So here I'm going to click it, it has selected that area. Now I can go over to this area and line it up and just go across this area that I want to cover until it's done. So now I've covered this area and if it's not perfect like this isn't quite lined up because I have a layer that I've edited on instead of doing it on the background layer I can actually edit my edit and change it slightly to make it work where I want it to work. And I didn't really need to edit this one but if I wanted to I could edit it. Line it up how I want. This works especially when you have um, areas that are sort of at an angle because it's kind of hard to match it. So now that area is totally cleaned up. It's gone, can't see it. Okay, so that is clone stamping. Now in other areas where we have multiple tones like skin and um, clothing materials where you don't want to copy and paste flat you want to use tools like the patch tool. The patch tool maintains, as I mentioned before, maintains the tone and texture of the area that you're trying to cover while copying the background part from another area. So if you have a picture where you have a shadow on your face and you want to maintain the tone of the shadow but you need to get rid of like a stray hair, you can surround that area. So let me show you in this section. So I have my patch tool selected, I have sample all layers selected, and I've selected content aware, and my adaptation is very strict. So what I want to do is I want to circle around this, and I'm going to keep a nice halo size around here. So I don't want to be too close to my coverage area, because I don't want it to try and sample from the peachy skin tone. I want it to only sample the edge. So it kind of looks like I've left uh, a good margin around the side. So now I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to click and pull. So I have the patch tool shows up here. Click it and hold it. And then I'm going to drag it up until that uh, hole is gone from the center. So you can see here that it looks like it's just going to copy it, right? So my original had um, some lighter tones in the bottom. So down here this has some lighter tones and then this is darker tones and I'm dragging it up into only darker tones so it looks like it's not going to match but because it copies the tone and texture it will copy that gradient uh, brown leather effect that I have at the bottom so if you see here it copied my gradient effect so it makes it more seamless because it copies that tone and texture instead of just copy and pasting a different section. Because if I had copied and pasted it, so let's go back here, take our clone stamp tool. If I just copy and pasted an area, alt, copy and paste. See, it just makes this hard, dark line. So the benefit of using the patch tool instead is that it maintains those tones that you want to preserve. So I select it, drag it up until I get rid of the circle, don't go too near lines, let it go, maintains the tone and texture. So same thing down here, leave a nice circle, find an area that I want to drag it to, maintain it, maintains tone and texture, and covers the area. So for larger areas especially, you're going to want to use the patch tool. And if you have too much lines in the area, you may find that you run into problems with blurring. But if you keep enough of a um, halo around it, if you keep enough margin, you can prevent a lot of that from happening. So we'll try and find an area that I like the texture. Didn't work perfectly. Let's pull from over here because this is pretty similar. So mostly seamless. You may have to clean up your edges just slightly, but for the most part, this looks pretty natural. So we're keeping a large margin on our patch tool. 
dragging it over to an area that we like. And it's patch that area. Same thing here. And you just do that until these are all gone. So let's patch this one. We like this area. It's maintained my tone and texture. So there's a little bit of a uh, mismatch here, but you can always clean that up. And that looks pretty good too, especially when we're zoomed out. Okay, so now we'll go over here. We'll do the same thing. We want to fix this with the patch tool. Keep a nice wide margin. We'll go down here. Fixed. Okay, same thing on this side. And we're just patching all these areas. Nice and easy. Keep in a wide margin. Click and drag. And it's fixed. So all of that fixed. And then down here, now here is a problem area because we have a hard line and then this area. So it's going to be difficult for us to do this um, using the patch tool because you're right next to a line. So let me show you what happens with the patch tool in this area. So we kept our wide margin and now it's basically a 50-50 crapshoot if it's going to work or not. So we'll drag it up to an area that we like and we'll try and make it match if we can. It's not really going to match. So we'll see if this will work. We don't know. I never really know. Okay, so it kind of kind of worked. Okay, so this doesn't really work. So unfortunately the patch tool is not going to be very good for this area. So in this area we're going to have to clone stamp and then clean it up. So I'm going to try clone stamping from up here. I'm going to soften my hardness because I'm in a clothing area now. Keep my opacity at 100% because I want full coverage and then I'm going to try and see if I can copy and paste this section into this section. So that doesn't work very perfectly, unfortunately. So this type of uh, area is a little bit harder to fix. So instead I'm going to pull from here, drag it over. And the problem with this is it's going to start looking very copy pasty because I'm literally, that's what I'm doing, I'm copying and pasting. So in this area, it's going to take a little bit more effort to make it look natural after it's over. So you're going to probably have to use multiple tools in this area. So we'll copy a section using Alt, select it, then we'll try and line it up as best as possible, find another section, try and line it up. And you keep just doing this until you've covered your hole. So this this kind of section is the more difficult one because you don't have much choice when you have a line and a big section except for to clone stamp the hell out of it and then try and edit it afterwards. So you can already see that I have a lot of copy looking areas here. Uh, it just kind of looks exactly like what I did, which is copying and pasting. So all this area looks very copy pasted. So I'm going to have to try and clone stamp, fix the clone stamp with more clone stamping by increasing it a little bit, decreasing my opacity a little bit, I'm going to pull areas of texture from other parts to sort of cover up the area that I have made so much copy on so that I can make it look more like I have not copy pasted a whole big sections of my photo. And I'm doing this pretty rapidly so it's not perfect but it could be worse. <laughs> it could still have a hole in it. Okay, so my original clone stamping is very 
copy pasty and then I've cleaned it up with more clone stamping to fix it and then if I wanted to go a step further I could even take my spot healing brush and just sort of go over little sections of it and spot heal it in sections. So now I zoom out and that looks pretty natural. Before, after. Okay, now onto the face. This is a pretty extreme example, but um, you can see here I have lines where my mesh lips are on this skin. So what I want to do is I want to do my spot healing tool. Spot healing is pretty much the same thing as the patch tool, except for it smart selects an area of a similar tone to copy and paste. But, like in the name, spot healing is best for spots, so it's not good for doing large swaths of the skin. So if I did a whole large swath of skin, it doesn't look very natural, it just sort of makes little blurred sections. So we don't want to do that. We want to do only small spot heals. Okay. Spot healing, we want to do in small sections. So here I've got all of this like granulated line. So I'm going to do little spot healings. Oh, that didn't turn out very good. A lot of this is a uh, little hit or miss. So I'm going to spot heal these sections and it's going to pull sections from other areas. Now I'm just doing really small little areas to clean up the line. It's not an obvious line so it's not as it's not in as much danger from um, having the weird blurred effect. I can even use patch tool sometimes, and again, it's a little bit hit or miss. So I'll select this little area, and I'll drag down here, and we'll see if it works out for me. And that worked pretty well. So it got rid of that hard line. There's a little bit of a hard line, but it's not a huge, it's not a very obvious distinct line, so it matched the tone pretty well. And you continue to do a little bit of patch healing, a little bit of spot healing around these areas. Just try and make sure that you don't choose spot healing um, for large areas. Now, this discoloration is a little bit too big for me to use the um, patch and spot healing tool because it's so near another tone and texture. So instead, I'm going to have to go back to my clone stamp. Oh, that's not clone stamp. <laughs> I have to go back to my clone stamp and select a color I like. I'm going to maintain having soft, a soft brush, 0 to 50% hardness, mostly lower than 50%. I'll maintain a lower opacity, so maybe around 20. Then I'll select a color I like, and I'll go over the discoloration. You just have to make sure that you are continually selecting your um, color. So let's say I like this color, right? And that's cool. I can go over it, but if I go too far, I start selecting my lips. So I want to pull that brush over, but then I'm selecting my lip, right? So you're going to continually be alt click sample, alt click sample. It's a little bit tedious, but you end up with a better finish. So we'll probably want to use clone stamp to fix this line here, this shadow line, because if we use patch tool, it's just going to blur it because there's two tones and textures. Patch tool, because of the multiple tone and texture, is probably going to not look so natural. Also, I don't have a lot of room to sample from. So see, it's just kind of blurred it. It didn't really, it didn't really work out. So that line was a little too distinct. So instead, we're going to clone stamp, alt, oh, I keep selecting the wrong thing. I'm losing my mind. Alt click a sample, and then with a lower opacity, we'll just slowly start blending that line until it's not obvious. I like to select the area closest to it, so I'll alt click right above the area, then go down, and it's blending it in because my opacity is set pretty low. Blend, alt click, move over, blending it in. And you end up having to clean up some of the work that you do, but by large, it works pretty well. And we don't want to have the opacity set too high because we don't want to just copy and paste blanket tones over the whole image. So instead, we'll, oop, too much. Alt click, clean it up, alt click, 
clean it up with a low opacity. We're selecting and cleaning, selecting and cleaning. And if we go too far, we could always erase it because we're on a new layer. Okay, so we've cleaned this up pretty well. It's not perfect because I don't want to keep you here forever. <laughs> but it looks pretty good comparatively. And then down here, and this is a very extreme example, but very similar concept. So I could use my patch tool in this area, but it's only going to really work as a um, making it a little bit blurrier. So it will help me get rid of the hard line but it will not really mesh the colors. So I can select it. And I can pull it down. It's going to blur it, but it's not really going to get rid of it. So it doesn't really work as a fix, but it does take away the hard line. And then I can do the same thing over here. I can kind of make it work, or I could clone stamp this area, sort of line it up. And part of the reason for this is because I have this as content aware. It helps make these lines work better. Okay, so I've got the basic principle here, and then I have these lines that we don't want. So again, we will see if patch works. It may not work in this area. Blurred it, which is better than nothing. Same thing over here, hard line. Pull it over there blurred it better than nothing. And then we can go in and clean it up by using the clone stamp tool with a reduced opacity to sort of start blending this even more. So we're just blending, 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 blending forever. And this will never be perfect because the skin tone is so different, but most of the time you're blending small differences, not large differences. I made this a little bit more extreme because I wanted to show you but normally you wouldn't have to do quite as extreme of a job as I'm doing now. At least I hope not. <laughs> so we're just, we're alt clicking to select color and then literally just painting over at a low opacity so we can gradually build it up. And it won't ever be 100% perfect because these tones aren't really meant to go together. One is very bluey and one is very yellowy by comparison. But much better than it was before. So here's before, after. Before, after. So the whole thing, we've cleaned up a ton of imperfections with just three tools. And a lot of this is working through making this work on your own. You may have to take some steps backward to change your tool if something doesn't work, but using these three tools you can clean up most of your imperfections and have a fairly seamless finish because by comparison this looks a hundred times better. So that is using those three tools, the clone stamp, the patch tool, and the spot healing tool. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. You can send them to me on Plurk, send them to me on Flickr, or send them to me in Second Life. If you have suggestions for future videos you'd like to see, you can send me those as well. And otherwise, thank you for joining me, and have a great day.